Well, welcome to St Margaret's on this Wednesday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed that little Bible quiz. And uh, you might like to type in what your score was and share with others. Maybe you don't want to. But it's good to come together as we, at the end of the day, spend time with God in prayer and hearing from his word. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all, and all people shall, shall see, see it, it together. together. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as, as in, in the beginning, beginning so, so now, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. First of our canticles, a song of praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make, make your, your face to shine, shine upon us, that your, your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will bring forth its increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. You, O God, will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear you. The day is now past, the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We pause in a time of silence as we quieten our hearts coming before God. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 94. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs... O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shine out in glory. Arise, Arise judge, judge of, of the earth, earth and, and requite the, the proud as they deserve. deserve. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How, how long, long shall, shall all evil doers pour out words? How, how long, long shall, shall they, they boast and flaunt themselves? They crush your people, O Lord. They oppress your own possession. They, they murder, murder the, the widow, widow and the alien. alien. They, they put, put the fatherless, fatherless to death. And they say, the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob consider it. Consider this, you senseless among the people. Fools, when will you understand? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He, he who, who disciplines, disciplines the nations, will he will not, he not punish? punish? Has the As teacher, teacher of, the of the world no knowledge? The Lord knows human thoughts. He knows that they are mere breath. Blessed, Blessed are, are those whom you discipline, O Lord, and teach from your law. Giving them rest from days of misery till a pit is dug for the wicked. The Lord, the Lord will, will not, not cast, cast off, off his people, people, nor will he forsake his own. For justice shall return to the righteous, and with them to all the true of heart, who will, who will stand, stand up, up for us against, against the wicked, the wicked. who will who take, take my right part part. against the evildoers. If the Lord had not been my helper, I would soon have dwelt in the land of silence, but when, but when I, I said, said my, my foot has slipped, slipped your, your mercy, O Lord, Lord, was holding me. In all the doubts of my heart, your consolations delighted my soul. Will you Will be you any friends friend to the court of wickedness, wickedness that contrives that evil by means of law? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. But the Lord is my stronghold. My Lord is my rock and my refuge. Let him requite him for their wickedness and silence them for their evil. 
The Lord our God shall silence them. God of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue our journey through Jeremiah. Tonight, the latter part of chapter 17, beginning at verse 19 through to chapter 18, verse 12. Thus said the Lord to me, Go and stand in the people's gate, by which the kings of Judah enter, and by which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, for the sake of your lives, take care that you do not burden, do not bear a burden on the Sabbath day, or bring it by the gates of Jerusalem. Do not carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath, or do any work, but keep the Sabbath day holy, as I commanded your ancestors. Yet they did not listen or incline their ear. They stiffened their necks and would not hear or receive instruction. But if you would listen to me, says the Lord, and bring in no burden by the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but keep the Sabbath day holy and do no work on it, then there shall enter by the gates of the city kings who sit on the throne of David, riding on in chariots, and on horses, they and their officials, the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall be inhabited forever. And people shall come from the towns of Judah and the places around Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin, from the Shephelah, from the hill country, and from the Negev, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, grain offerings and frankincense and bringing thank offerings to the house of the Lord. But if you do not listen to me to keep the Sabbath day holy and to carry no burden through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates. It will devour the palace of, of Jerusalem and shall not be quenched. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter, shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. But they say, It is no use. We will follow our own plans and each of us will act according to the stubbornness of our evil will. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. John's going to read for us now from Philippians. Philippians. 
The second reading tonight is from St Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, chapter 4, commencing at verse 8. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need. For I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates to your account. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. I am fully satisfied. Now that I have received from Epiphrodus the gifts you have sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God, and my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of the Emperor's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. May your word live in us. And, and bear much fruit, fruit to, to your, your glory. glory. Thanks, John. And so we come to the second of our canticles, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The collect for the week following the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Father of all, who gave your only begotten Son to take, up, to take upon himself the form of a servant and to be obedient even unto death on a cross, give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that, sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the cycle of prayer across the Anglican Communion, we uphold to you this day, Father, the Diocese of Angola in southern Africa. We uphold to you the bishops, clergy and people of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, that they would be a witness to your truth and light in the life of the various communities in which they share. We pray, Father, that the violence and the selfishness that that country has suffered in the past may be transformed by your love. In Australia, as we remember different dioceses, we tonight remember the ministry to the Defence Force with Grant Dibden, the, the Bishop to the Defence Force. We uphold to you, Father, the chaplains of the ADF, along with all the members of the Defence Force. We especially pray that there would be a growing witness of Christ in the ADF, that the many hundreds of men and women of faith in the ADF may be encouraged and strengthened to share about the hope that is in them, the hope of Christ. In our own diocese, we pray this night for the parish of Beval, for Christopher Bate, their parish priest, with retired clergy Brian Hughes and Juliana Bate, for your people as they serve you in that part of the diocese. As we pray for the mission agencies of the church, we uphold to you, Father, the work of the Church Missionary Society, CMS. We give you thanks for their long ministry of raising, training and sending men and women to serve you in various capacities in the life of communities around the world. We ask that the witness that they bear will be one of clarity and celebration of your love and provision. Amongst the schools, we pray this night for St. Andrew's Anglican College of Perigian Springs, their principal, Chris Ivey, Gary McLean as chaplain, Rosalind Charles in chairing the college council, the members of the college council, the staff of the college, the students, and their families. Pour upon them, Father, your help and wisdom as they seek to build up not only the academic and sporting skills of students, but more importantly, building up your love and knowledge of you in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray, Father, for the life of our community. We pray this night for all those who work in the building industry, mindful of the myriad of trades that go to the construction of uh, buildings and houses. We give you thanks for the development of skills. We pray for those businesses considering taking on apprentices. We pray too for those who are training into the different trades. 
that there would be opportunity for them to work and to gain their skills. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray, Father, for loved ones, continuing to pray that there would be opportunities for uh, greater travel, particularly with uh, Australians stuck overseas and for greater opportunity for family members to be reconnected. We pray for families who have immigrated to Australia, who are struggling with the lack of opportunity of having support from family, and help us, Father, as your people, to reach out to those who are without extended family support around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we come to the evening collect. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father comfort our hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. And so we come to the end of our time together this evening. Thank you for joining with us. I remind you that uh, next week we come to the beginning of Lent with Ash Wednesday. And as we look to uh, preparation for Sunday worship, we're going to be looking at the transfiguration. So I encourage you to do some some Googling and some reading up on uh, the events surrounding the transfiguration and its significance and meaning in the gospel story. And so we bid you good night and God bless and look forward to you joining with us again tomorrow evening as we come for a time of prayer and hearing from God's word at five o'clock. Make way, make way, make way, make way, for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings, make way, make way, make way, make way, for the King